So I'm, I'm hoping that most of you have had an opportunity to uh, uh, read the letter that I wrote to the church this week or watch the video or um, maybe did both. Um, there's been a lot of uh, traffic on my Facebook page, uh, more than ever. Um, and I just, it's been so encouraging for both me and Tara to read your comments. And um, several of y'all have written notes, uh, emails, text messages. Those have been uh, so important and significant to us um, as we've shared this news. And, and, um, and uh, yeah, just want to walk the next six months with you as we transition out of our role here at Redeemer. Um, so thank you. Let's just begin with that. Um, but uh, I don't have a script uh, for this. Um, I mean, a lot of what we're going to be talking about over the next six months um, has been the story of our coming to San Antonio and, and then uh, our leaving, but also part of our departure will be and entrusting. Um, th- though God has calling us away, the mission and vision that God has given for Redeemer Presbyterian Church continues. And our elders and deacons, our staff and pastors will be carrying that story forward. Uh, the work that God has for Redeemer in the city of San Antonio is far from finished. Um, and that's, that's exciting for me. Uh, I've always said that, the, and I think I said this in, the, in my uh, address uh, that was on Facebook, the last gift, and I really mean this, um, the gift that I will give this church is uh, transitioning. And that was always going to be a transition. Um, some way or other, God was going to move us on. And, um, and that time is now here. But the gift of that transition is this church learning how to live beyond its founder, uh, beyond the, the first spiritual father that God gave to this church. And, um, and that really handing off of the baton to uh, the, the elders and uh, the shepherds of this congregation. And as, as challenging and as I almost got choked up in that last hymn, um, and I can't tell you when that will happen for me or Tara, but, but as challenging as this is, it's a great time for Redeemer Church because um, each one of you are going to feel ownership for this church and its mission, its life, its vitality in a new way. Realize your role is that much more important and significant. And um, it's going to be exciting to see who God brings uh, to lead this church and how God has uniquely shaped them. He already knows who that person is. He's prepared them and he's prepared you. Um, and he will take us take us forward. Um, okay, so that's my unscripted remarks. Tara, baton, go. I'm done. I've yeah. used up all my words today. Yeah, I definitely uh, did not script any remarks for this morning. So anyway, uh, we are we're excited about the future, and we're so excited about Redeemer and um, Covenant Seminary planted many seeds that the Lord brought here to San Antonio and caused to grow into this church that I think loved the city so well, loved its neighbors so well, loved us so well. Um, and I, I love this church. I'm just so excited to see what the Lord is going to do in this church. And, um, and I'm, I'm thankful that the Lord is giving us the opportunity to go back and support to support the um, to support the ministry of Covenant that that came here with us and and to take back all of you guys to Covenant Seminary, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, so um, that that makes me think about one thing. Uh, when it's a strange thing to say, okay, God's calling us to do this, um, and w- what I can tell you is that's happened to me a few times in our lives. Um, one time was the call to go to seminary in St. Louis at Covenant. It was a clear, distinct call that we go there uh, for my theological education. Secondly was the call to Waco, um, which uh, God just orchestrated several different um, events that clearly um, showed us that he wanted us to serve RUF at Baylor University. Uh, one being that I was slated to be the RUF campus minister at Mizzou at Columbia. 
And God completely changed, uh, closed that door until I committed to Baylor, and then he reopened that door. And somebody else went to Mizzou, and I went to Baylor. So that brought me to Texas. Um, The other clear call was uh, coming to San Antonio. And it wasn't just clear in the sense that I had an overwhelming, like, sense of it, but it was also clear that it was discriminating. Um, At that time, God had put a lot of different opportunities on my plate as I was thinking about transitioning out of serving RUF at Baylor. Um, And one of those opportunities was to go back to the Southeast and serve RUF at a major state university um, from which I got my undergraduate degree. Uh, Another one was to go serve in Belize um, and help start a seminary there, believe it or not and go work with our MTW missionaries in Belize City. And another one was to go plant a church outside of, uh, well, from Park City's Presbyterian Church, a sister church um, in a a growing, rapidly developing part of Dallas. And uh, they wanted to send us about 200 people to start that church. And Tara was really drawn to that opportunity. That's a joke. Um, But she really was, because it was going to be like, okay, this is a real thing, Tom. This is not just some dream you got. And, um, right? You want to add anything? Right. I mean, there were, there were people and money and a, and land and that. <laughs> yeah, that pretty I'm much glad sum- we came here. <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. But she was like, you know, that would be really a lot different. And yet, uh, I, I had this. I just had this sense, okay, God wants to do something in our city, in this city, um, which wasn't even my city yet. And I, I just had this sense that the Lord wanted to touch lives here. And um, we made a couple of trips to San Antonio the summer of 2001. Um, some of you we met with that summer. Um, and we came away from those trips uh, convinced that God was leading us here. And, and so began the journey of planting Redeemer. But it was, it was because of something God doing in the heart of His people. And I guess that's what I want to I testify to, because God is doing those kinds of things in your lives too. And, I, and, and he, He's calling us to respond in faith and obedience um, to where He will take us um, and to how we will move forward. And, and, uh, and with Covenant Seminary, goodness, I can, pr- I can assure you that I was, not, I was not angling for that position. Uh, that was, that's not the kind of thing that you apply for or you try to put your name in for. Um, and, uh, um, and was surprised that, that um, they wanted to seriously talk with us. Um, although I, had, I, I will tell you that I've had friends say over the years that that's something you should do. And I was always like, no, nah, whatever. And um, when the, when the uh, outgoing president announced his retirement and uh, transition, um, several friends said, hey, you def- I'm, I'm going to put your name in. And so that happened, and I just thought for sure, once I started the initial uh, inquiry into um, the process, that um, I would proverbially, and I used to say this, be kicked to the curb. I said, they're not going to explore explore me. And, um, but we just kept moving forward in the process, and God kept drawing our hearts um, to this opportunity. And b- by the end, it was clear that this is where God is leading us, and we're excited to serve in this way, and God is bringing us and the church to a new place, and He will see us, see us through that. Okay, that's enough of our talking. What are your questions or comments? Please stand up so I can hear you if you want to ask something. As usual, I have anticipated everything, and you are completely in silence and awe. (laughs) No, seriously, any, any comments or questions? Yes, Roy. Yeah, um, 
I'm going to save those comments. Uh, Ruling Elder Henry Sauer is going to be up here in just a second. We, we do have a plan. It's, it's just being formed. Uh, one of the things that is challenging about this. repeat the question? Okay, Royce had a, a question about timelines, transition processes, succession plan. And um, w what I was saying is uh, a ruling elder Henry Sauer is going to come up here in a minute and talk about that a little bit. But I will just say that we were not able to publicly talk about this with the leaders of this church until uh, a week ago. And that was because of the need to keep this quiet for the board of trustees at Covenant Seminary. Um, they didn't find out. The, the executive committee knew and the search committee knew, but not the, not the board of trustees and nor did the faculty and staff at Covenant Seminary. The board of trustees at Covenant found out last Sunday, um, and, uh, and that's when I told our elders here, our session. And then uh, we talked to the staff on Wednesday, the deacons on Tuesday night, and then we didn't announce to the whole church until after the Board of Trustees voted uh, to approve this appointment. And I've since learned, I, I actually misinformed the church in the video address I gave. I said that this has to be voted on by the General Assembly. I just found out this morning that was wrong. It doesn't. The PCA got something right. Um, so we, I'm not going to have to go to a whole denominational vote on that one, which is great. Um, the, the Board of Trustees, they, they've made that vote, and so that's done. You, I didn't even tell you that. Um, this is where I come for my news. <laughs> yep, church. Um, so we're, we're glad for that. But the, the point is, is that we haven't had time to formulate a plan, but the session will be quickly over the next week, uh, week and a half, that those steps will be taken, and, and Henry will talk about that in a minute. Um, another question. Yes, Sarah. Um, I think it would be good to figure out how much we would have to keep him in there. But, you know, what would be the right number for him to be in there if we could keep him in there? And then also, how do we keep him in there? A great question. Her que Sarah's question is, what will be the role for Tara as the wife of the president? And how can the church pray for us in this transition? I yeah. mean, I, I think the role is just as as any, uh, just as my role here to support Tom in his ministry. And um, I think any ways that I can create community and encourage the, the, the staff, the faculty, the students, those will be priorities, hospitality for me. And then, um, yeah, there's a good chance that I'll, I'll also be looking for a job. Yeah. Let me pray for you. And so I think I think the, there are several things that we would appreciate your prayers for. Um, one is, this is a completely new job for me. Um, I've not. I don't have any experience in higher education. I kept telling them that I have no experience. <laughs> um, let me remind you, I have no experience, and um, I, I I couldn't get out of the job that way. Um, so there's going to be a learning curve. I would, I would just appreciate prayer for that. I mean, I'll get coaching and I'll get guidance. Um, and just prayer for, for that learning curve. Um, prayer that we would be able to build trust and, and the kind of strong relationships that are essential to a thriving faith community like we have here at Redeemer. So we're going to be building lots of new relationships. Um, we're going to be saying not permanent goodbyes, but we will be getting distance with you and that's going to be challenging and hard for all of us and uh, just pray for all of us as we undergo this transition all these relationships that are so close to us um, we also need prayer for a house um, we're going to sell a house and we're going to buy a house and um, and that's a that's a whole different conversation that we've got to navigate we've got to find a realtor all that um, the, the other thing that, that accompanies this job is, uh, it's been kind of nice being in San Antonio. We're a little bit on the edge of the PCA, sort of the hinterlands of the PCA, and not everything that happens in San Antonio is, uh, is under a microscope like it is in some other cities in the PCA, and um, you, you might think about me going from the very edge to the very center, 
So everything that I do at Covenant Seminary will be under intense scrutiny, and there will be a lot of opinions about. And uh, that, will re- that will require a lot of wisdom on my part, and um, just, uh, just negotiating the, co- the denominational conversation. So um, I would just appreciate prayer for wisdom um, and uh, just the grace to, to know when to speak, how to speak, um, and who to speak with and who and to. So those are the kinds of things that would be important prayer requests. Yeah, Brent. Isn't that people saying cell phone number? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't answered that one yet, Brent. <laughs> no, I actually, I, I kind of hopeful I will, but I, I don't know. Some things I... I Good uh, question, Brent. Thanks. <laughs> other questions? Okay, yes. Remember to repeat the question. Um, well, this is a question of which Tara and I have spent quite a bit of time. And con- Caroline. And conversing about. And that is, how are we going to get good tortillas and breakfast tacos to, to St. Louis? Because as far as we can tell, they don't have either there. And, um, and so I think we're going to be um, putting a lot of stuff in freezers and carrying them up there. But, but uh, yeah, it's... I mean, this is that, that is some of the hardest parts of leaving San Antonio. We just love the culture here. Um, the people, the, the way we do life in South Texas is so special to all of us. And uh, St. Louis is different. It's a great city. It's a historic city. But it's definitely a Midwestern city. And so we're going to rely on you to come visit us with fresh tortillas, fresh tacos, um, you know, all of the stuff we love down here. Because no, Annie, we're not sure that ministry can be done without breakfast tacos as the centerpiece. Yeah, yeah. it's fair. Not good ministry anyway. You know, there, there are some people who purport to do ministry and then we do ministry. Okay, Victor had a question in the back. You know, the thing that most, ex- the question is what most excites me in this role as president of Covenant Seminary. I think the thing that most excites me in this role is the opportunity to influence uh, young divinity students, um, not so young yet, just divinity students, um, uh, counselors, uh, and ministry leaders that will shape not only the Presbyterian Church in America, but churches all across America and and the globe. Um, uh, Covenant Seminary alumni serving in every state across the Union 40 different countries, I think they told me, across um, the world, and the opportunity to invest in them and um, help them see uh, not just the story of grace as it's told in the scriptures, but to apply that story of grace um, and then go out in ministry. That's what I want to do. I I want to see a generation of ministry leaders go out and be able to do what we've been able to do here. I want there to be lots and lots of Redeemer Presbyterian churches across the world. And that's, um, that's my hope, that God is going to use us to help that occur. Um, and God will use our gifts, experiences, passions uh, here uh, to invest in the, in the lives of those, those students at Covenant Seminary. That's, that's really, the, that's really the, the, the reason why I want to do this. Okay, I don't see any other questions, but I want to thank you for those questions, and I know that you may have others, so please don't hesitate to reach out to me by email, text, Facebook messaging, anything like that, um, and would love to, love to sit down and talk with you more about what, um, what's going on. And now let me invite Henry, I'm going to invite you to come up, Henry, and share a little bit. Yeah. Ooh, got the power, like Garth Brooks up here. Um, 
That's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's what y'all were all thinking, I'm sure. <laughs> um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for taking this time. Um, uh, my brothers on the session, the other elders, um, have asked me to come and say a few words to you all this morning. Um, the session has, the elders have responsibility. Part of our responsibility is for shepherding and for governance of this church. And so we have an important responsibility uh, in this transition for Redeemer. Um, and so we wanted to give you all the opportunity to, to hear how the session is processing this and, and what the path is going forward for us. Um, first of all, I would say, uh, this can be a little hard for me it's to hard, get through too, um, that we're sad. Um, Uh, like many of you, these are our dear friends. We have uh, gone through a lot of life together. Uh, sorry, golly. Um, you know, raised our kids together um, and uh, gone through all the ups and downs of, of life and career and marriage and... and uh, our parents and all of those things and we are um, so grateful uh, for the friendship and the love and the ministry of Tom and Tara amongst us um, so we are definitely sad uh, to see them uh, depart from here and go to the land of terrible tortillas <laughs> um, but I also want you to know that we are not shocked. The session is not shocked. The, ses the session is not panicked about this in any way. Um, for those of you who come from the business world, you may think, oh, how did the session allow this to happen? It's like the board of trustees allowing a, a phenomenal CEO to leave and go to the a competitor. That is not the mindset of this at all. Um, this is, we, we knew this day would come. We didn't know it would be right now, but we knew this day would come um, that Tom and Tara would get another call. And we knew that, um, A, because we knew uh, Tom and Tara would be faithful to a call if it came. And we also, um, we also have had the, the rich blessing of seeing uh, Tom's incredible, unique uh, passion and gifting for, um, for developing leaders and um, knew that there would be an opportunity at some point for um, that, the gifting and passion that Tom has to have an even broader platform than Redeemer. And that is this call. Uh, to covenant. If you think about all uh, the pastors and leaders and counselors that will come out of um, covenant over the years to come under Tom's leadership, I mean, what a blessing uh, to the PCA, um, to the kingdom. As Victor said, um, man, this makes him feel better about the PCA, knowing that Tom's going to be in charge of uh, of. <laughs> of Covenant uh, Theological Seminary and, and uh, feel the same way. Uh, so we knew this day would come. Um, so instead of being panicked or, or shocked, I would say there's three words uh, that, the, that the session is feeling. One is, is grateful. I'm grateful for Tom and Tara and their family. Uh, the second, uh, the, the next two words would be excited and prepared. Um, excited to see, uh, as I said, what Tom and Tara will do, uh, how the Lord will use them in St. Louis, use them at Covenant. Um, excited for the PCA, excited for the kingdom in that. Um, we're excited about the next chapter in Redeemer. Um, you know, it's hard to imagine uh, Redeemer uh, without Tom and Tara here, but there is an exciting new chapter for us. We're all going to learn. We're all going to grow. 
in new ways uh, because of the transition and uh, the new senior pastor that would come. And as Thomas said, the Lord knows who that is. Um, the Lord will be calling uh, our new pastor to us, and, uh, and that will be good for all of us. So I ask you now to be, already be preparing yourself that Redeemer is going to be different. Um, it, is, it will be, there will be a new pastor, but we will be on the same mission. We will be on the same mission. We will have the same vision. We will have the same values. Uh, Redeemer will remain committed to gospel truth, committed to living life together, committed to loving the Lord. Um, those things will remain. Um, and uh, I would also say uh, we feel prepared. Um, we have had the blessing, the session has had the blessing, this church has had the blessing of Tom preparing us for this. Um, we have a healthy, an extremely healthy, uh, united uh, group of elders on the session prepared to lead us through this transition. Now, we've never done this before, uh, so this will be learning for us as we do this, but, but I, I believe that, uh, that we are ready for this learning and ready for leading uh, in this way. Um, so, um, Royce, to your question earlier, what we'll be doing is in the next week or so, we'll be forming a search committee. Uh, we'll be members, uh, officers of the church, elders and deacons, um, a representative um, a representation from the staff and from the congregation as well. Uh, we will conduct a search um, and be open uh, to the Lord's leading in this and be praying for the person that would come, um, that they would be uh, ready to hear this call as well. Um, so, so we will be, um, over the next coming weeks, you can expect an update from us about uh, who will be serving on the search committee and what the process will look like going forward. Um, so be, be looking for those updates as we go along. Um, and so what we ask of you all now um, as Tom said in his sermon today, um, uh, the faithful are asked to not be indifferent. Um, so please do not be indifferent to this process. We, uh, and the main way uh, for you all to, um, to participate is to be uh, faithful in prayer. Mm. Uh, pray for Tom and Tara. Uh, pray for their transition. Uh, pray for yourself <laughs> and, uh, and your own processing of this transition. Uh, and um, ask that you pray uh, for Redeemer. Pray for all of us um, as we go through this transition and, and especially be in prayer for that person that the Lord would call to us. Uh, that, they, that call would be clear and, uh, and that we would be open, that that person would be open to that call and it would be clear to us and to the search committee that this is the person that the Lord has brought to us. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Will you pray for us? Yes. All right. Well, let's pray together. Uh, Lord, Heavenly Father, we, uh, we come to you uh, this morning um, processing this news together um, in love, um, in gratitude uh, for the ministry of Tom and Tara, um, for the, in gratitude for the clarity of of this call that you have given them, Lord, um, and that they have open hearts uh, for this, uh, even not knowing what exactly it will look like, Lord. Pray that you go before them, know that you will uh, go before them and uh, lay out the path for them, Father. Um, we pray for um, this church. We thank you uh, that you have established this church, Lord, that you called Tom and Tara here. Uh, to found it, to lead us so faithfully for so many years, Father, but also know uh, when it was time to leave and to follow your next call, uh, Lord. So pray for us in this transition. Um, Lord, we pray for the search committee that would come together, that you would guide those that would be called for that and guide our process, Lord, and that, uh, that we would be faithful stewards of your church. We pray uh, for the person uh, and the family that you would call to us, Lord, that you would be opening their hearts to that even now. Um, Lord, we love you. We trust you. Um, we thank you that you are sovereign and that you are good uh, and you look after your people. Father, we lift all these things up to you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. All right, don't forget your kids, and we will see you later.